Thank you for joining another episode of IntentWise Connect, our webinar series with other Amazon experts from across the industry. Today, we're happy to be sitting with Liron Hirschkorn from Incrementum Digital. He's the founder of Incrementum Digital, who's going to walk us through 12 free Amazon tools that every seller needs to use. This is going to be a super packed agenda with a bunch of free tips and tricks to get the most out of your Amazon account. Especially coming out of Amazon Accelerate last week, we see all of yes. the investments that Amazon is making for sellers. And so you don't want to miss out on some of these new tools. Yeah, definitely. There were some, you should look at, there's a lot of good posts on LinkedIn for uh, all the announcements recently made at Amazon Accelerate. Jeff Cohen had a post. Um, I also put out a, a podcast um, on my podcast uh, called E-Commerce Mindset this week with all the updates. Um, some of those are not in here because I, I prepared this uh, before Accelerate, but um, I'll share some things that have been updated um, for some context on, on the slides that uh, that will be in addition to, to this. Uh, but yes, thank you so much for coming on. I will share my screen uh, if you can. Um, real quick, Laurent, real quick, oh, yes. let me just do a quick note on logistics oh, and then yes. I will pass it over to you. Um, okay, so thank you. No problem. Yeah, quick note on logistics, everybody. This recording will be sent out next week. So if you are not able to join for the full session, don't worry. Or if you want to share this with um, people who aren't able to make it, we will share a recording out next week. Um, Last thing, I'll just give a quick note on IntentWise before we hand it over to Laurent for his presentation. If you haven't heard of IntentWise or you're not exactly sure what we do, this is a quick overview of our IntentWise, as we call it, e-commerce cloud and our suite of software applications to help sellers and agencies on Amazon. First, we have an ad optimizer product. This helps you use rules and AI to manage your bids across all of Amazon's ad products and DSP. In the middle, we have our IntentWise Analytics Cloud, which is a robust e-commerce data infrastructure, allows you to automate the collection, unification, and distribution of all of your Amazon and Walmart data. And last, we have IntentWise Explorer, IntentWise AMC, which is our user interface and data pipelines for Amazon Marketing Cloud. Um, the easiest way and fastest way to your path of actionable insights with AMC. So if you have any more questions about what IntentWise does, feel free to reach out to us after this webinar. And with that, I will pass it over to you, Leron. Thank you. And uh, I'll give a shout out to uh, to IntentWise's newsletter. Uh, I recommend that you go to their website and sign up for that. Uh, it's got uh, very useful, good information, not just surface level fluff uh, uh, type of newsletter. Um, I get insights from it. I like to follow you know, all the other uh, thought leaders, companies that are putting out great content in, in the space. And I follow the uh, the IntentWise newsletter. So I recommend it. Um, you know, you get insights from from the company, from uh, from the founder, from Ryan. Uh, so highly, uh, highly recommend that. Okay, you should be able to see my screen. We got you. Okay, cool. I'll be looking off a little bit to the side here because my... Uh, presentations on the other screen here. So 12 Amazon tools, every Amazon seller should be leveraging in 2324. Um, and um, basically um, what I'm going to be talking about are several different tools that are uh, free to use from Amazon that I would say probably if you're watching this webinar, I would be surprised if anybody here is actually using all 12 of these tools. Um, and maybe while we're uh, while we're doing this, you can comment uh, either here on Zoom or on social media. Have you used this tool before? Have you not used this tool before? Uh, and again, we'll add a little bit to this because since uh, Accelerate, there's some enhancements that have come on for uh, for some of this stuff. So we, we'll be able to uh, talk about that as well. So let's start with the elephant in the room, uh, which is. Uh, which is uh, advertising, right? That's the business I'm in. That's the business IntentWise is in. Um, Amazon advertising is your biggest lever on uh, marketing-wise on Amazon, right? It's how you get more visibility, how you can get top of search, how you can rank uh, organically. Um, but this this gets a lot of attention, right? We talk about this on social media all the time. There's a lot of content about Amazon uh, advertising. So we're not going to talk about Amazon advertising today because this is a one you have to pay for this. And we're going to talk about like free tools. Um, and um, and two, why is this why is this most widely used? Well, this does have a lot of power, 
Um, but, and it takes less work to set up. I mean, you can click a couple of buttons and set up an auto campaign. Some of these tools that we'll talk about take some work. Um, that's your advantage, right? Um, the harder something is to execute that you do execute, the stronger that's going to be a competitive advantage for your, for your business, uh, right? Um, using premium A+, not so easy, right? You need these uh, interactive modules, taking full advantage of it video, all these things, right? And then go above and beyond. How about testing two different versions of premium A plus takes even more work. But if you do that, and if you do the hard work, you will, um, you will uh, have a competitive uh, advantage in the business. Amazon advertising is pretty much used by everyone. Now, obviously there's difference between okay, good and great. Uh, that's why our companies exist, but everyone's using this. Let's talk about the things that are free to use that can help you get incremental sales that uh that not everyone's using so um this is kind of yeah the most underrated lever right you you see a bunch of different things here that we'll that we'll talk about the free tool suite is often underutilized a lot of opportunity and takes some work and you see some images here from things that we'll talk about um during this uh during this um presentation and also uh and also i would realize that some of the stuff that's free may not stay free forever okay we've seen this we've seen this in the past i remember when lightning deals were free <laughs> um you know i first i remember when lightning deals weren't even available to third-party sellers then i remember when they came out and they cost money and they were free then then you know then they cost money right so this seems to be the way things go uh amazon will launch something beta they want to get a lot of users on it and then eventually you know uh, i remember when you had one unit of something at Amazon and you didn't get charged long-term storage fees as long as it was one unit. So book booksellers loved it, used bookseller stuff because they would send one item and they could leave it there for three years, a long tail item until it sold for, you know, for a high sum. I remember when there was no peak pricing on storage fees, right? A lot of things that don't cost will cost. And I think some of the things in here uh, we'll talk about, there will be opportunities for Amazon to add to cost. And the hints are, that some of this stuff is sitting as beta in advertising and it's free. It means it's not gonna be free forever. So by use, utilizing these things, it can help you amplify your paid advertising, which means it helps you increase your conversion rates, get more visibility, increase your traffic, increase your brand presence, and can help drive repeat purchases. We all want all these things. So let's talk about the first thing. Again, many of you have heard about this, virtual bundles. Um, I would love to hear um, from the uh, from the chat um, who has implemented virtual bundles um, and talk to you about some of the advantages and, and disadvantages. So virtual bundle advantages allow you to create different combinations of uh, products that are bundles without actually physically creating those bundles either in your warehouse and shipping them or at FBA and shipping them, especially when you don't know how well they're going to sell um they will allow you to uh, allow customers you know you can can increase your average order value uh you can see here um uh kachina the um this is a uh i think some kind of soap here and you can see that their bundle here actually has five reviews that means people have bought it right it means they're getting sales on it and probably not a tremendous amount of sales but they're getting some sales on it look at other brands uh, and you'll see some brands that are that have high amount of sales will have reviews on their bundles, which means people are buying them. You can drive sponsored brand traffic also to these uh, to these bundles and drive a, a higher average order value. And there's no you know need to to manage um, to manage um, you know inventory um, around it. Now, what are the the downside? The downsides are they have limited visibility. So the main place they're going to be visible is <clears throat> on your listing. Um, and you cannot run uh, traditional ads on it. So you can't run sponsored product ads on it. And somebody in the chat is saying, I don't think you could use PPC on virtual bundles. You can use them in sponsored brands, but not in sponsored products. Um, that is my understanding. I, I, believe, um, I believe that's correct. And Heather, another thing um, that we'll talk about here on why I recommend this is um, you're mentioning that we're, we're not getting a lot of traction. 
So I think that's generally true across the board in terms of traction. But one thing that it does give you um, is it helps take more real estate um, from the brand uh, uh, and pushes uh, on the page and pushes down your competitor sponsored ads further down the page. And I think that is one of the biggest benefits of having virtual bundles. One, it gives you more visibility just to those other products. You, you actually don't know if somebody saw that you saw another product, ended up going and buying that product on its own, you wouldn't necessarily know that, but you're getting some brand awareness and impressions for those products on your listing. And number two, you're strategically using it to push ads down on the page. So I would say those are kind of the main things and any sales are incremental uh, uh, and, and kind of a bonus the way I see it. Amazon doesn't today allow you to promote it very much. Um, I'm not sure why, but you can't run sponsored product ads for, for these. Um, and so that's part of the downside on why I think, you know, they just don't sell as much. They just don't have the visibility, but I really like it for the real estate that it takes up on the page. So visibility, um, taking up the page, brand recognition, brand awareness. These are, uh, these are all the, um, the, the benefits. Um, can you add them to the storefront? I don't think I've seen them in the storefront. Um, and can these be used in apparel with multiple sizes? Uh, I believe you can add any products, but I'm not sure why somebody would want to buy multiple sizes um, for, uh, for, uh, for apparel. But um, yeah, I think any, any ASINs can be, can be combined here uh, in terms of, in terms of bundles. Um, let's go on to the, to the next one. Uh, Amazon posts. So uh, probably, hopefully many, many here have used Amazon posts. Um, this is one of those things that is in beta uh, in terms of Amazon advertising. It's kind of where you would find it, which means I think eventually Amazon will probably have a, what I would think maybe some kind of like freemium model where you will have this free option, but maybe that will allow you to boost or maybe target specific pages uh, and I think there will be a paid component that comes um, eventually. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that gets, you know, announced uh, this year. Amazon is looking to grow their ad revenue in every single possible way. Uh, and, you know, they've taken up a lot of real estate already on the page with sponsored ads. So they need to find other ways on Amazon and off Amazon. And Post is one of those things that currently takes free real estate on, on the page that Amazon could at least convert part of that to paid, to paid real estate. So if I was sitting at Amazon, I would say, okay, why don't we allow people to kind of boost certain posts? And maybe with that, we'll actually provide more data on conversions, et cetera, to see, to see if it's working. You don't really get so as much data today, but you do get an engagement, um, uh, click data that, that is coming from, uh, from, from Amazon posts. Um, so benefits reach, um, you, um, you, 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 you get visibility on mobile. You also get visibility sometimes on desktop. Amazon has been playing around with, uh, showing posts on desktop. You, if a, if a customer clicks on it and goes to your feed, they get to kind of see, more social media type posts with you. They can follow the brand as well, which can add to your brand followers, which you can then market to those through other means that we'll talk about here. Um, and then there's there's um, other benefits, um, I would say, outside of posts. I don't know if it's, um, if it's in here, um, but I'll talk about after this, um, I'll talk about Inspire also. Um, so with Inspire, you can work with influencers um, and uh, I'll, I'll talk about that. These are... Um, some of the uh, some of the placements. So we've seen this kind of uh, on detail pages too, more from more from the brand where if you have at least 10 posts, uh, it will show actually on the on the detail page. Again, this has kind of been on and off. Um, we've seen it under um, the, the different placements. Um, when you um, when you click on it, um, it'll uh, you see it there on the bottom related posts. Um, and then you see it there on the third one um, where you it says discover products in this category and then you can click show product and you can go you can go to the listing. So um, a lot of places, category feed, related post feed, retail brand detail page, brand owned detail page, 
where posts show up. This is absolutely free. Uh, and I think you should be submitting at least uh, one of these a day or two or three. Laurent, do you have any tips in terms of what brands should be posting? Is, should they take their Instagram content and just duplicate it here? Should they make it unique to Amazon in any way? I don't think you need to make it unique to Amazon. I think if you're already putting content on social media, you just need to make sure it's sized appropriately, et cetera. But you should be using, you could be using the exact same content. Uh, what Amazon doesn't, what Amazon wants is lifestyle. They don't want, uh, one, too much text on the image. And two, they don't want just like your product on a white background image. Um, yeah. So those are, they really want kind of like what you see here, uh, lifestyle type images is what they're, what they're looking for. Uh, and yeah, I would say if you have a good, you know, Instagram, you just repurpose that. That's super easy. It's super cheap to, um, to do this. Uh, you know, we have, we have a service. Um, you can go to a freelance graphic designer, you can go to Fiverr, you can go to Upwork, you, you know, if you have somebody in house or whatever, it's super cheap to, to produce. Um, and yeah, I guess if you're going to do posts, you might as well post on Instagram. If you're posting on Instagram, you might as well do posts too and, and, and repurpose that content. You can also take those images you know, use them across uh, your storefront or, you know, other, other places. So you can repurpose this. Um, here's an example um, of a brand um, that uh, I'm an advisor to um, called um, Bellway Fiber, a supplement brand. Um, and this is data from last um, few months. And you can see they had 23,000 impressions um, 309 engagement. Um, that means people kind of interacting, looking, looking at the, um, at the, um, post, spending some time on it, product click 67, and they reached 8,874 unique, um, unique customers. Uh, so it does get visibility and I believe it does drive sales. I think it's a numbers game. I think you need to be very consistent. You can schedule and you can see here on the bottom, how you can um, you can schedule uh, posts in advance. You can mark which ASINs are in the are in the image, um, and I would recommend being consistent. Whether you do one a day or two a day or three a week, have a consistent schedule of just producing these and schedule them. And I believe that it should provide visibility. Um, one thing that's um, you know an additional item that is sort of fairly newer. This past year on Amazon is something called Inspire. Um, if you go to your, if you're, you know, uh, uh, a shopper on Amazon, you have the app on the bottom. You should have this um, pulling mine up. Um, this uh, it's changed now from a light bulb on my app to this like uh, almost like a star looking thing. So Amazon is playing around with kind of the the look and feel of it. Um, but basically, this is kind of like Amazon's version of uh, you know TikTok or Instagram kind of uh, reels, images, etc., And you can see actually on this image that, that, um, came across my feed, it has 2000 likes, right? That, that hard thing is 2000. That means if 2000 people liked it, how many people actually viewed it, right? A lot more, because we know only a very small percentage of people hit the like button or whatever, right? So th this could have had, you know, 50,000 views or, you know, there are people interacting with this. I think it's especially good in certain categories. Um, so, you know, if you're selling something, if you're selling like a car part, you know, I don't think that's the right product for Inspire. Although probably if I was selling car parts, I would make it all about like cool cars, right? It's kind of like how I would make the, the whole content around the brand. And then that would just bring brand awareness. And then hopefully maybe when somebody needs that thing, they eventually will recognize the brand name when they're searching on Amazon or when they're looking, but that's probably not the ideal, but this is great for products that are uh, more social media friendly, clothes, apparel, kitchen products, furniture, or as you know, furniture, right? A, a lot of these, uh, a, a, a lot of products that would benefit from this. Um, in this case, only Amazon influencers can post. Amazon has uh, a program called the influencer program and you can apply. I actually applied and got approved to it. I don't have a crazy big like social media following and Amazon approved me. So you could try to get approved yourself and post, um, but you can also just go here, find the influencers that are on here that are posting. And um, especially maybe if they're in your category and reach out to them and work with them. And they, they basically get a commission from Amazon when they post and somebody buys. So 
Um, it's actually free. You could make uh, additional deals with those. I actually recommend that if you really want them to promote your products. You could say, because they get they get the data basically from uh, Amazon affiliate on, on what's sold and how much you're getting paid. So they're getting the data. So you can say, I'll pay you an additional 10% uh commission or an additional fee for posting or or something to, to that extent because then you're only paying that 10 percent. amazon pays the rent the rest um and you can get your content on this um inspire feed so i recommend that you go to inspire go through it there's a good opportunity i think to reach out to influencers and then of course you can then take that content and then you can repurpose it put it on your put it on posts put it on your instagram if you run social media ads or whatever um, put it on a page on your storefront that says, you know, uh, you know, lots of happy customers or whatever. Right. And you can put these like gallery images. You can use this in your A plus so many places that you can, uh, that you can repurpose this, um, this content. Okay. Let's go to brand stories. Um, this is something I highly, highly recommend for uh, a number of reasons. One of the reasons why I recommend this is because in order to get premium A plus, uh, brand story is a pre prerequisite. Um, so, um, and, and it also, again, it allows you to differentiate your brand, share more of your story uh, about the brand where, you know, you don't have a ton of places on Amazon that you can do that the same way you could do on, you know, on a website page where you can customize. Um, and you can see these nice pages. Um, you know, I've seen some great brand stories. I've seen ones that are not as good, that are very text heavy. I would focus a lot on the visual. I love the one here. Um, I guess it's called um, uh, Athik, E-T-H-I-Q-U. Yeah, I recommend go check it out. And the story is, it starts with a person, right? She, they started the brand in her kitchen in 2012, uh, experimenting with uh, shampoo bars, right? It's like you get to have a connection to the brand that's authentic, um, especially if your competition also is, you know, um, uh, nameless, you know, kind of like faceless brand, right? From um, that that's not doing that, that nobody has a connection to. You're creating a, a connection with with the customer, and I love how they have these different categories. Those lead to um, those images, and there's links that could lead to the storefront and how they're showing very visual hair, face, lip, body, the kind of products that they sell. This shows right above your A plus. You're taking up more place, more space. Again, more real estate. Um, on the page, you have the ability to um, to cross sell, and again, this is a prerequisite to getting uh, premium A plus content, which I see more and more brands um, utilizing. Um, there's also something else called brand profiles. A lot of people don't know about this, um, but this is a feature that allows brands to display your logo, brand color um, next to product listings. Uh, again, it builds trust, creates branding differentiation. Um, and this is kind of what that looks like, where you can um, pick the brand color, add a tagline, description. Um, and again, I think uh, uh, you can add a lifestyle image. Um, one of the announcements, uh, I think, at Accelerate was that um, the, and if, if you go to seller profile, seller pages, if you click on a seller name now um, on Amazon, like if you, you know, next to that, to cart button or, or sold by X brand sold by X and ships by Amazon. Click on the brand. You can now go to their um, page, uh, and you'll see now actually the most recent product I think you looked at will be there where you can add it to cart. And also brands can now add more information there. So not exactly brand profiles, but Amazon seems to be allowing you to do more telling of your story, sharing. You know, if you have a customer service phone number or different things there that you can add there. So I recommend you go update that because that was. Um, an announcement that came out of um, out of um, Accelerate, um, as well as other things on the listing side. We're talking here about you know brand um, brand story on the listing side. Amazon is now adding the ability. I've seen this on some listings already to write your listing using AI. One of the things they're going to be adding is um, generating um, product description text based on an image of the product. And also based on a link. So if you have a website with the product, you'll be Amazon will be able to pick up certain things um, and fill them in from you using using uh, AI. So Amazon's making enhancements, um, brand profiles. Recommend you do you do this um, to um, get more branding on on your um, on your brand. Now this is kind of a not one of the twelve things, but this is kind of like a bonus item 
um, is having consistent branding across your brand. Uh, so you have your storefront, you have your A plus content, you have posts, right? You have all these things now, brand story, where you can have branding, right? This is just an example. Um, you know, when I see this right away, I recognize the branding, right? I can see it's uh, it's Coke. So the um, sort of uh, top banner image, having a, a unified image um, and consistent branding allows you to people to e more easily um, refer, uh, remember your brand creates trust, loyalty. Um, so having, you know, more cohesiveness between your brand on all these different places where you now have the ability to, to be more creative um makes sense and by the way those posts show up also on your storefront so people can scroll through those those posts um i also recommend adding some things to your storefront on, on a on a separate note you, i've seen brands do pretty creative things within their storefront for example i saw a brand that sells um kitchen products um have a recipe page on their on their um uh on their storefront where they just have images and text of like different recipes and they're starting to add content there. Um, so you can do more interesting things within your storefront uh, and um, and branding. Okay, mention this premium A plus content. Uh, be interested to see how many people have implemented it. Um, a lot of brands seem to be doing this now and, and adding this. Um, this gives you uh, these are these are a few that actually we've we've done. We actually changed the brand name uh, on these once we put them out to showcase. So uh, we're not showing our our client brand names here, but um, these are some that we've done, and they're really nice. You have the ability to make them a lot more um, interactive. So you see, um, like the one in the middle, you have a video there. Um, then you have these. Um, different uh different things you can click on to see different images um below that here on the apparel brand um we have these little dots which are shoppable images that's something you could do in the storefront you can't do it on regular a plus but you could do it with premium a plus is when you click on it you can actually go right to the listing for that particular product so, so shoppable images you can have multiple videos um uh you could have faq section uh so you can you can make it a lot make your a plus a lot more interactive um and you know the more time somebody spends on your page and listing the better um a little bit of a hack here on getting access to premium a plus um um so somebody spencer is saying they just recently dropped one of the requirements from 10 approved basic content to just five such so in interesting because um i know previously you had to have at least submitted 15 a plus content over the last 12 months in order to get access um <clears throat> we found a hack anyway that uh, you know i don't know if we invented it but it's out there uh that if you duplicate your a plus 15 times just duplicate and duplicate it that seemed to have uh solved the issue um so even with this 10 approved or five i think you could just duplicate it um and get approved and get access to to premium a plus so for people that only have you know a few products um they would have had to create you know different versions of the a plus and submit it but you can actually just duplicate it um and get access to this um thanks for that note spencer i'll look into um a look into what you just mentioned about new requirements um and yes all your listings within the brand need to have a plus and brand story um then they give you access this is what we've done it worked and yeah uh ali you probably had submitted enough also during the last 12 months where um yeah where you got access and uh yeah muhammad uh um uh daniel actually and our team thank you is saying recently got changed from 15 to 5 a plus content a few days ago so thank you for that update we will update this things change so fast on amazon that's why i need to go on webinars and pay attention to what's uh to what's happening even we're uh, learning what's that I said even we're learning today yeah even yeah exactly even 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 for me uh you know I try to stay up to date but uh you know you learn when you're paying attention um brand referral bonus so this is something that also got updated uh at uh Amazon uh accelerate so um brand referral bonus something that you can use to get basically free money from uh from uh, uh amazon 
Um, this allows you to, you when you're sending traffic from outside of Amazon into Amazon and you create a attribution link, uh, Amazon will also give you back most categories. It's 10% of the sales price back um, as a bonus. So this obviously can offset some of those uh, costs um, of driving traffic, um, give you additional ROI, um, give you insight as to which traffic is working, uh, you know, from from off off Amazon to Amazon. Um, some of the downsides of let's see if we have it here. We don't have it. Some of the downsides of this is that it doesn't always work. Um, meaning attribution is still in beta, and sometimes it'll work well when somebody's like on a blog and they click a link and they go to Amazon. But uh, often when it goes from in app to in app, so somebody's on TikTok mobile and they go to their Amazon app uh, attribution, at least for us, does not seem to work as well. I think that's why it's still in beta. I think Amazon relies on kind of working with that social media uh, provider and with like TikTok, for example, having shops. Uh, I don't know that they would be too friendly to share the information, but we'll see. Um, but one thing with this that Amazon just opened up is the ability to use uh, Amazon DSP to retarget uh, people who click on the attribution link. Um, and retarget them. So you'll be able to continue to show them ads if they click the link, which is really nice because these are people that didn't even go to Amazon um, before seeing seeing that um, um, seeing that attribution link. Um, John says it appears they also dropped the requirement for premium and plus content that you don't have to have all of your products with a brand story or other A plus content. This was a problem for one of my clients that has 500 plus SKUs. So that is interesting. Uh, we will um, we will relook at the at the requirements uh, based on this uh, based on these updates. But um, Amazon is known to roll something out, make it a little bit more restrictive, and then open it up more. So it's not surprising that you know they're kind of changing the requirements and. For Amazon, they should want more brands to have premium A plus because it's a better customer uh, customer experience, and it should lead to um, more conversions. Liron, before we move yes. on, we have a few questions in the Q and A. Uh, yes. First one, let's see. Where can these post and inspire posts be seen by customers? Is it in the search page or on the product detail page, or both? Uh, great. So posts, um, they've always shown up on mobile. If you go to a listing and you scroll down the page, um, you will see uh, posts further down the page. Um, they can see it there. And then um, Inspire, there's a little button on the Amazon app. Awesome. And then one more question, and then I'll let you continue. Yep. Is free A plus premium available for 1P vendors too? I believe it is. I know at one point it was a huge fee for it. Um, yeah. like twenty five thousand dollars or something. Um, but I think it's follow up. I think it's free now. Okay, cool. Um, okay, and then yeah, somebody asked a question on other requirements for premium plus, but it seems like um, it seems like that's changing. Um, Kyle, you could try to reach out to me even after, and we're happy to take a look and see if we can help you see what's going on there. Perfect. Um, okay, customer. Um, customer engagement. Um, so this is actually a tool that allows you to directly communicate with uh, with uh, customers. Um, it helps create brand loyalty, um, helps create repeat purchase, um, um, basically allows you to send messages to um, to brand followers and other segments for um, for new product launches or or certain, uh, certain templates that Amazon has for, or we think you should, you, we think you'd be interested in this product or or a new product. It's limited in terms of what you can say because it's basically templated. Um, and recently, Amazon made some changes. So before, you can send these engagements to brand followers, repeat purchases, high spend customers. Amazon seems to have limited it more now and moved some of that over to the brand tailored promotions. We'll talk about the difference. So customer engagement means actually the customer gets an email. Um, and it's a new product from the brand you follow, right? Kind of a thing. And you can click on it and it doesn't necessarily need to have a promotion or anything at attached to it. And it's called customer engagement. And um, it's great It's great for like followers. Um, so you can send to brand followers 
um, and customers. So the more followers you have, the better. Um, and Amazon has transitioned some of these features over to Brand Taylor Promotion. So it used to be here that you had high spend customers, repeat purchasers. Now it seems to have at least been paused, whether temporarily or not, we don't know, over to Brand Taylor Promotion. So here the customers actually get an email and it doesn't have to have a promotion attached to it. Um, and then we also have Brand Taylor Promotions, which Amazon actually, since Accelerate, has added some categories in here. So I've seen things like promising customers. Um, people who you know visit a listing and have a high chance of becoming a customer, um, but this is something we pulled uh, last month um, on on our brand, um, and this was the list of different audiences. Now this is different because they don't get a message, an email from you. They will see a promotion on Amazon, so they will see something. Um, actually, I recently saw this. Um, I was talking to somebody at Accelerate and uh, at an event, and I. Uh, told me about their product and I looked at it. And a couple of days later, when I came home, I was in my cart on Amazon. And I saw a 5% off um, in my cart on their product. And I'm pretty sure it was coming because uh, it was coming from brand tailored promotions because it didn't look like a standard coupon. It was like this messaging in red that said 5% off. So basically this will be, um, this will be promotions that are shown only to these audiences on Amazon, but this has to come with a, with a promotion, with a discount unlike the customer engagement. Um, but this allows you to bring back people who may have not otherwise brought their product. Now, um, is there some cannibalization here? Potentially, right? Maybe I was talking to that person uh, and I was planning on buying their product um, and now it shows up and it's 5% off and uh, I was going to buy it anyway, right? And now there's a discount on it. But but I still think you're going to get incremental sales when you do this. Um, we did this and within, within a couple of days, we saw few hundred dollars in sales and within like a weekend we saw several thousand dollars in sales from doing the highest audiences that are here which is card abandoners um, and potential new customers um if you have a consumable product you'll have more people as repeat customers and that's another opportunity to get people you know to buy again or onto um onto things like um subscribe and save um another thing that amazon rolled out recently that's not in here because it's a new update i just saw is um coupons for just to get people to reorder so now when you go to regular coupons you have uh regular coupons you can set up you have subscribe and save and there's also reorder coupons so people that have ordered your product before you can show them also a coupon that only they would see um on a on a listing um and yeah this is uh what i mentioned like over a weekend after running this uh at the end of july we saw we, we saw you know a couple thousand and a uh, thousand plus in sales um but then after a few days we saw several thousand dollars so this can definitely get you incremental sales uh brand loyalty perhaps again if you have a product has subscribe and save getting people on subscribe and save um increased conversions um so this is kind of like you know, free money. Now, also, we were more aggressive here with, with the discount. We put a 30% discount. Why? Because in this case, in this case, when we get a customer for this brand, it's not just that potential one sale. It's a, this is a, a supplement. So we really want to bring in that customer to try the product once um, and then get those purchases. So if you have a one-time product, depending on your margins, maybe you want to be less aggressive, maybe we want to be more aggressive. Maybe if you have a, in my mind, if I had a um, not a consumable product and I had a newer product, I would probably be more aggressive with the discount because I want those conversions, which can help me rank better, get more reviews. And if I have a more mature product, I probably would have a, a lower, uh, that, that's already well-established, already has a lot of reviews, um, and good sales. I'll probably be, uh, less aggressive with the, with the, with the, um, with the discount. Um, also, this allows you to kind of understand which audiences, like once you run this uh, a couple of times with different audiences and testing, which ones are the most valuable. Um, it can help you, uh, you know, schedule also promotions around different uh, key sales periods. Um, and you can also monitor the success of these um, promotions. Um, another uh, another item, uh, John said, uh, it appears brand tail promotions must be limited. It's it's I can't find it under advertising. I'm not sure if it's under advertising, um, but there is a tab. I think it's maybe under growth, et cetera. Or if you're also um, if you're also on permissions on somebody else's account, they need to give you specific access in order to see brand tailored promotions. So make sure you have that. Make sure you have that access, which maybe 
is why you can't, you mentioned you have clients. So maybe, um, maybe that you don't have the access uh, because that was, that was the case with uh, one, one uh, client of ours that I looked at. Um, B2B pricing. This is another free thing from, from Amazon. Um, you may not think of your product for B2B, but there are a lot of situations where a product can be B2B. There could be, you know, you can sell a toy and there could be schools or nurseries that buy it. There could be governments. There could be different organizations, a church, right? There could be different organizations that would want to buy it where, you know, it doesn't have to be an office product or very specific business product in order to have it. So you could have better pricing for business and you can also set uh, quantity discounts um, that are that are um, in place. So it's something you want to do um, because those customers that have, you know, Amazon business would then see that business pricing and would see the bulk discounts. And then you may win a sale over somebody else, um, you know, or you may be considered if you have that uh, versus not being considered um, if you um, if you don't if you don't have it. Um, so this is another another uh, benefit. Um, you now have also the ability to um, um, have something uh, review management. Um, this is something you may want to make sure that you're doing on the back end. You um, are able to um, respond to critical reviews. So it's something you definitely should be doing in the um, in the back end. Also, another feature that's not free but not expensive either. I think it's a couple hundred bucks. Is um, is the Vine review program? I recommend it. Um, in some cases, Vine reviewers can be a tiny bit more critical. Um, and if your product is one of those products that maybe would work, you know, in some cases and on others, that could be with a certain supplement, uh, or that could be with uh, a beauty product. You know, you may want to consider if you want to do Vine. I generally still recommend it because. If you're going to get bad reviews from buying customers, you're probably going to get bad reviews from regular customers and you you, you have maybe a different issue. Um, or if you're going to get three and a half stars and that's standard for your type of product, um, that could be, you know, we have we have customers that are in certain niches where three and a half is normal. Uh, for example, we have a customer that sells a spray for um, like a, a bitter apple spray for dogs not to like bite your furniture. But it requires also training along with using it. Um, and so some people just spray it and find that it doesn't work for them, but it requires a certain training protocol with it. Recommend that you do use Vine and that you do engage with, um, with critical reviews, et cetera, um, and look at those insights that you have as far as um, customer reviews and also how you can improve, um, improve your products. So um, now you can go to, to your um, Seller Central back end um and you can um you know you can respond to um to critical uh to critical reviews and but you should also be make sure you're reviewing your reviews in general and getting uh getting insights um last one i'll mention here is manage experiments uh something again i don't think enough brands and sellers are using uh, this allows you to test Amazon this year added, um, I think now being able before it was just your main image, a plus and titles. I think Amazon now added where you can actually test your secondary images, um, as well. Um, testing is something every good marketer should be doing, uh, testing, you know, I think at the very least things like your main image, your title, um, they're generally easy to do or easier to do than, than, you know, testing a plus. Um, but I still recommend that you test, uh, a plus because you could get a better conversion and, um, over time you should be, you should be testing and also adding new features. And also if you added products to your brand, you could incorporate them in your a plus as far as comparison chart, um, or as far as just, uh, having kind of your updating your about the brand um, section updating your storefront. So you do want to look at your creative, uh, over time and manage experiments, um, can help you. This is something, um, you know, we ran, um, or an example of something we ran, I think some time ago, but you can see, um, uh, or actually, I, I'm not sure if we didn't, we didn't run this one. Um, but we, we pulled it, um, and there's version a version B and Amazon will show you, um, sort of which which title is getting more sales, um, sold more units, et cetera. So definitely 
worthwhile doing it. And again, now you can run uh, version A or B of a main image, but I think Amazon has recently added being able to do your secondary uh, images uh, as well. And Ryan, thanks for um, about the brand tail promotions, um, getting the user permissions. Um, probably if you don't see it visible, um, John, that's the that's the um, reason. Um, it should be uh, under the brands drop down in Seller Central. If you right. don't see it, follow those instructions. Great. Um, thank you. Um, and Ian's asking, have you heard of any critical feedback regarding reliability of data? Um, what I heard what I heard initially about this is that it's sometimes can be fairly slow to get a conclusive um, conclusive uh, answer. But what I would say is that all of this, you can also, if you think, if let's say you really thought, man, image A is so much better. I can't believe image B1, right? What you can then do is test it manually, right? Run image A, run it for 10 days, then run image B for 10 days, um, and just measure with your own data what the what the what the difference is. Try not to make too many other changes to your listing at the time, price, and other things that could that could you know influence the changes. Uh, and um, if you're going to do stuff like that, best not to do it during you know ho holiday season as demand is increasing, or you know try to do it during somewhat of a neutral period of time where you can um, where you can um, you know test test that out. Um, um, thank you. Um, you can check us out incrementumdigital.com. Um, one bonus thing uh, here is using keywords in Q&A. Um, this is a little bit maybe of a gray area, um, but uh, when you launch a product, you know, um, maybe you want to ask some friends and family to ask some questions. Um, I believe Amazon does take into account sort of the SEO value here. Um, and also in general, if there's good questions you think people would want to know about the product, um, you can ask them here. Um, again, hopefully you've answered those questions in your listing. This is also a great place to harvest information over time and take those most common questions that people do have and make sure that you are answering that in the listing, right? With your images, with your text, especially in images. So this is kind of, you know, something that you should be um, that you should be uh, looking at. Um, so with that, um, if there are any other questions, happy to um, see if we can um, uh, answer those um, and hope that um, you got some value from uh, from this. A lot of this is, I would say, some of this is common knowledge, but I think this is a good reminder to make sure that you're, you know, if you don't have enough things to do that you go and implement, you know, some of these, some of these uh, additional things in your, in your business. Heather, curious to know who typically owns and manages these tools internally. Uh, it's great, but it's a lot. Um, you mean, you mean on your team who owns it or um, uh, maybe you can be more specific. Thank you, Ian. Said lots of good stuff. Um, Heather, if you want to elaborate more on your question, who on your team um, I, I guess it kind of depends on the size of your company. Um, there's, 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 there may be multiple teams that are involved here. And what I mean is that, um, let's say internally, it depends, right? If you're the owner and you're a one person show kind of thing, then it's you. Um, but um, she said, very small team, want to make a case for expanding the team. Um, also, you can outsource some of this stuff, right? So for example, you may say, hey, I want to do Amazon Post, but you're not a graphic designer. Right, so you you'll need to either have an internal creative team or outsource outsource that, um, and then also there are outside companies. Right, uh, we do creative work. We can help. We can help with some of this stuff. There's many other companies that can help. Um, um, so I think you have to decide if you want to do it in house or outsource. But I think you need to have somebody at least internally that is strategic that says, okay, there's a lot of things here. What are the, what's the one thing we're going to focus on right now? Because you can't do all of them. Generally, again, unless you're very big or you have multiple people, you can't execute on all these at once. So I would look at this list and say, what is the lowest hanging fruit, right? Um, premium A plus, pretty low hanging fruit in terms of like, it's on the listing, it's very visible. Brand story, on the listing, very visible. Um, Amazon post, doesn't take too much to create, you know, have a graphic designer go create 30 images for you for the next month and then schedule it out. So look at the list here and say, what's the lowest hanging fruit that we're not doing that we think will make 
the biggest impact and then execute that. And you may not need to add team members. You may need to outsource it, but you should have at least one person that's at least thinking strategically about the brand that will say, what is it that we need to do? And then it's a question of, do we do it internally? Do we go to an agency? Do we go to Upwork? Like, how are we, act, how are we going to execute this? Um, you know, but I, 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 if, I, if I was looking at this and I would go through this list, like, for example, uh, I would go to Brand Taylor Promotions. This takes five minutes to set up. So if, if I didn't, if I had this in place and I had a decent amount of people here, first thing I would go do because it takes five minutes, right? It doesn't require creative, doesn't really require just a promotion. So go through the list, ask yourself those questions. Um, and then ideally, yeah, you have somebody on the team that is consistently looking at these things for existing listings. And, you know, this is just a one-time promotion for a period of time. You need to, you need to do this consistently if you want to do it. Um, you know, so, but you don't have to do it all in-house. I think it's more the strategy that you should have somebody in-house that is thinking about that strategy side of the business. Hopefully that's um, that's helpful. Um, Amazon Influence feature can only be utilized for Inspire and Amazon Live. Um, Amazon Influencer can be, well, influencers can post on social media, et cetera, to uh, two products. They can do Amazon Live um, and, and they can do Inspire, but obviously they can also post on social media. It's kind of whatever, whatever you work out with them, right? They can create video for you that you can then use on your listing or in Premium 8 Plus. Uh, and then, yeah, there are creative ways also to figure out some of these things. Like, you know, you can go to, um, there's websites like Billio or a friend of mine, Ian, has a website called Join Brands, where you can have influencers create content for you. Very easily, you can create video, very, very low cost that you add to a listing. Uh, and you can, it's important that you give them direction on what you want. Uh, otherwise, you may not get what you want. But there are ways to creatively think about content and doing things at a low cost and outsourcing that you don't have to do everything yourself. So uh, I think the first thing you need to do is kind of think a little bit um, and then figure out how to execute around it. And uh, to your earlier point, Laron, before we started this, you said a lot of these things take time and that's kind of the point, right? That's why your competition is not utilizing these things. So the more that you're able to utilize the team that you have, the resources that you have, the things that you might already be doing for other channels to take advantage of these 12 free tools that Amazon offers, the better positioned you will be in the market. And they're not meant to be yes. easy or or, or effortless, um, but that's the whole point. That's how you'll differentiate yourself. Correct. Um, and, and and again, I would make I would make that I would make that list of what is going to be most impactful to my brand if I implement it this month, you know, and then and then continue to go down that list. Exactly. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Laron. Um, yes, I see there's a question in the QA. We will be sharing the slides and the video recording of this. Um, you should get it early next week if you've registered and feel free to share that um, to anybody else that might have missed today's session. Amazing. Thank you again, Laurent. It's been Thank great you to so have much. you. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.